I was not aware until today that uh, apparently I suck at pool. So that's great. I had this whole uh, analogy planned about how good pool players are actually really good at, you know, geometry and angles and force and just physics in general and how you have to be really smart to be a good pool player and also how you have to be really smart to be a good edge rusher too because they also rely on angles and force and geometry and physics to get the job done. And then I was going to talk about how Jared Verse is the best edge rusher in this class at using angles and geometry and force and physics, but Apparently, I'm too shitty of a pool player to effectively use that analogy. So, here's the Jared Verse episode. Enjoy. Let's talk about those angles and forces and physics that Jared Verse is so good at using to his advantage. We all know he's a great athlete already, just a hair under 6'4", 255, with a 35-inch vert, a 10'7 broad, a sub 4'640", and decent arm length as well at 33.5 inches. I mean, the physical profile is really good. But it's how he maximizes that physical profile by using leverage and power that actually makes him a great player. He has a knack for always having a lower pad level than the tackle that's trying to block him, which again is relatively easy to do at under 6'4", but he also has a very quick, accurate strike too. So not only is he coming from a place of good leverage, but he also has perfect hand placement to really make use of that leverage and just completely collapse the pocket. He has maybe the best bull rush of any edge rusher in this class, even among the guys that are much bigger than him, like say Darius Robinson from Mizzou. And that impressive power is a big reason why a lot of people compare him to Khalil Mack. Now, for me, full disclosure, that's a little bit rich. I don't know if I could compare anybody in this class or even in most draft classes to Mack just because he's kind of a unicorn. But I do think a more realistic comp that's in the same neighborhood stylistically is Whitney Merciless, who back in the day had a very similar physical profile to Verse and also had a similar mastery of leverage and physics. And Merciless, by the way, if you never got to watch him, in his prime, he was an absolute dog. So I have no problem drafting somebody really high in the first round if I thought they were going to be a carbon copy of Whitney. Like, that's well worth a top 10 pick to me. Now, one advantage that Versus Power also gives him is that it makes him a better speed rusher, too. Which, I know, sounds weird, because when you think about a speed rush, you don't think of somebody using power, but... Versus initial strike has so much pop behind it that when he makes contact, he tends to really knock back a tackle and almost throw them off their desired track with that power. And when you knock a tackle back like that, it shortens the corner. What I mean by that is if you're a pure speed rusher that doesn't have any strength and you don't generate any kind of knockback, it makes your job a lot more difficult because then the tackle can give you what coaches call a hard shoulder. Think of it like their shoulders are still pointed to the outside. It kind of creates a sharp, hard edge to get around. But if you do knock them back a little bit or open the gate, as some coaches call it, that can turn that outside shoulder into a soft shoulder, which basically just means it's a more favorable angle to get around the corner because the tackle is knocked so far back and their outside shoulder has its angle reset, so to speak. I hope I explained that correctly, and if I sound like I'm just saying a bunch of gibberish, please let me know in the comments. I'm not trying to confuse anybody, but my point here is that power at its core is the basis for every kind of pass rush move, whether it's a power move or a finesse move. And generally, the best edge rushers in the league are the ones who have some element of power. Jared Verse is strong as hell. He has power. He knows how to leverage and maximize that power, and he knows how to use that power to then set up every other move in his arsenal, whether it's a cross chop, an inside counter, a double swipe. I mean, he's got everything in his bag, and he will use all of them. That strength also comes in handy as a run defender too, by the way, which I know is an afterthought for a lot of people when we grade edge rushers, but it shouldn't be because if you look at the NFL, you know, nickels being used 70, 80, sometimes 90% of the time, 
And if you're a nickel that much and you can't stop the run from nickel because your edge rushers just can't do anything against the run, well, guess what? You're probably going to lose. You need edge defenders that can stack on a tackle, peak one way, shed back the other way, make the tackle on the running back, and just cover for their back seven. There's a lot of NFL defenses these days that spend 50, maybe sometimes even more than 50% of their snaps in a too high safety shell. You literally cannot stop the run from those looks unless you have a big, heavy edge that can help you do it. It's just not going to happen. And Jared Verse is that big, heavy edge that can stop the run. So overall, you have a three down player from day one here that fits a modern defense. He's great on first down. He's great on third down. He has the physical tools. He has the technical refinement. He's got everything. I don't know where he's going in the top 15 to 20, but he fits pretty much everybody, and so he could go pretty much anywhere. And to me, fitting everywhere is one of the highest possible compliments I can give to any prospect. Well, as luck would have it, the sun is starting to come out again right as I finish this episode, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, remember, if you're a member of the Patreon at the dollar tier, meaning just giving a dollar a month, that'll give you access to my position rankings once I finish them, which I still haven't finished them, but they're coming pretty soon for all patrons at the dollar tier. And then of course, at the $5 tier, you get access to a bunch of exclusive videos and scouting reports that I won't be putting on this public channel, mainly because I can't. Uh, generally, I'm aiming to do two to three public videos per week on this channel, and then two private Patreon only scouting reports over on the Patreon. So if you enjoyed this, maybe you'll enjoy those. And I appreciate everybody who is supporting the channel through Patreon. It really does help a lot. Also, one quick reminder, if you're really into the NFL draft and you're also really into fantasy football, you can draft the incoming rookie class right now on Underdog Fantasy months before they're actually drafted into the real NFL. So if you have some particular rookies that you're a really big fan of, whether it's like Marshawn Lloyd, Jonathan Brooks, uh, Dylan Labe from New Hampshire, which I know sounds like a very random poll, but that's the only running back I've ever seen get 300 receiving yards in one game. So keep on your radar. Uh, there's a bunch of really good tight ends and obviously the rookie receiver class. Whoever you're keeping an eye on, you can draft them right now on Underdog Fantasy. And if you haven't signed up yet before, you can do so at the link in the description or with the QR code on the screen right now. And if you use promo code Brett, they'll match your deposit up to 100 bucks. So whatever you give up to 100 bucks, they will double it in your account. And you're also going to get access to a new depositor special, which this time of year is going to be NBA related. But if you like playing NBA pickums, that is also available for you as well. Thank you to Underdog for sponsoring today's show. I will see all of you again very soon. And until then, later.